Hey everybody, my name is Billy DeMichel from Scholastic and welcome to Winter's Tale of Virtual Field Trip. We're coming to you live from the Clearwater Marine Aquarium in Clearwater, Florida and it is a beautiful day here in Clearwater. Now during our visit to this aquarium today, we're going to learn some really cool facts about dolphins. We'll hear all about the amazing story of one very courageous little dolphin named Winter. Winter's story is now being told in a new book from Scholastic, Winter's Tale, How One Little Dolphin Learned to Swim Again, which is in stores now. Now, I really want to thank you for hosting today's virtual field yeah. trip. You know, there are thousands of classrooms all over America watching today, so no pressure, right? I'm with you. I'm all right. With you. David, I wanted to ask you first, what is it about the Clearwater Marine Aquarium that's such a special place for people to visit? Well, Billy, thanks for being here, and thank you for the students and teachers for tuning in. Uh, the aquarium does have a very unique job. I bet you there's not too many students and teachers watching that can say they've asked you to rescue a dolphin or a sea turtle. That's what we literally do. We have what we call the three R's. It's not reading, writing, arithmetic like in the classrooms. We call it rescue, rehabilitation, and release. So our job literally is like a, like a human hospital. We rescue marine life and we, take, and we get them well again. All right, so we know that dolphins, like humans, are warm-blooded mammals. Now, what other interesting facts can you tell us about the bottlenose dolphin? Well, they're bigger than a lot of people think. We've had them over 10 feet long, over 500 pounds, and we have to feed them 15 to 20 pounds of fish every day. So they're big eaters. That's about, you know, 80 hamburgers. <laughs> 50, yeah, okay. And also, they're very intelligent animals. Uh, they are very smart, they're social, they communicate with sound, even with motion, almost like dancing. You know, I had a chance to see firsthand that winter is really thriving here at the CMA. But her journey here was a difficult one, which started in December of 2005 off the east coast of Florida, very near to Cape Canaveral, which is where the space shuttle takes off. Let's take a look at this. As darkness approaches, the day has already been long. A distress call has been sent. Rescuers standing on guard trek to the location of the call, but what would they find? The life of a baby dolphin hangs in the balance. Can humans actually rescue a dolphin? The rescuers are about to see something they've never seen before and never will again. In the arms of her deliverers, Winter, named after the season in which she was found, clings to life. The most notable injury that we saw when Winter first arrived at the aquarium was her tail or, or, or her peduncle and the tail stock. It, it looked flimsy, it, it felt different. You could tell that the, the skin was peeling off where the rope had been. And um, actually the next day is when I found out she was going to lose her tail. Dying is not an option. Little does she know she will change the lives of disabled children and help injured soldiers walk. This is the story of Winter and her tail. What an incredible story. And the good news is here that there's a happy ending. But instead of telling you about it, we want to show you. So here she is, the little dolphin that could, the incredible Winter. <laughs> now, she is quite beautiful. As we learned from Joe Malo, Winter's trainers were really instrumental in helping her survive after the rescue. And it really took an incredible team of experts here at the CMA to help rehabilitate Winter. And I'd like you to meet just a few members of that team. On the pool platform with Winter, we have Winter's head trainer, Abby Stone, also the CMA supervisor of animal training, Elena Franklin, and from Hanger Prosthetics, Kevin Carroll. Now up here with me uh, are Diane Young, and she's the director of animal care here at the CMA, and Dan Sremka, also from Hanger Prosthetics. Um, Abby, I actually want to start with you down there. What's it like to work with Winter every single day? Well, it's really like being a mom. Every day I have the opportunity to teach, to love, and to really be inspired by winter. And I feel very privileged to have the opportunity to work with such an amazing animal and an animal that's able to inspire so many people. How did the idea of the prosthetic tail for winter come up? And actually, how did you guys create this? Yeah. Well, our team at Hangar got together with the trainers here at the aquarium and also winter's vets, came up with what needed to be involved or included in the tail. And then we actually took a mold or a, a cast of her tail she has left, just like you would if you broke your arm. We took it back to our lab, used plastic and other materials, and made the tail from that mold. 
Abby, I know you're actually going to, we're going to try to attach Winter's Tale right now for everybody. And Diane, I'm hoping that while Abby does that, and the viewing audience can see it, that maybe you can actually walk us through exactly what she's doing. Yes, of okay? course. So this next part that Abby has in her hand is actually the prosthetic. This is actually the brace and what it attaches to the fluke. And when Dan spoke earlier about the mold uh, that hanger took, that's actually the cup or the back portion there. That's where they got their mold. And that is what um, fits really nicely on what's left of Winter's tail. Look at that. Isn't that amazing, everyone? I mean, look at her go. She seems so happy. You guys have all done an extraordinary job. Now, as I mentioned at the top of the webcast, and we're going to keep coming back to see Winter as she swims with her tail, Winter's amazing story, this amazing story, is now being told in a beautiful new book from Scholastic. This is also the first time a major children's book will be accompanied by the Nintendo DS release of the fully interactive storybook based on the Scholastic book Winter's Tale. Now the DS game is from Turtle Pond Interactive and it includes educational interactive mini games and activities that are a whole lot of fun. But also, and very important, they reinforce the life lessons of Winter's story. It's very, very cool. I've seen it. It's an amazing game. All of your books are collaborations and they're all family collaborations which is just so great and they're also all true inspirational stories about animals overcoming adversity whether it's um, the unlikely friendship between a hippo and a tortoise in Owen and Mose, or a baby polar bear named Canute or a little gorilla named Misa who was rescued in the Congo or, or winter um, what is it about this these are all recurring things what is it about this theme that makes you want to continue to write about it and what is it that you hope readers are taking away from these stories? Well it's become a collection of stories that do deal with difficult issues and I think this uh, this one was easy it's the first time we've now been uh, to Africa twice to Europe and now we're in the United States and we have a story from the sea so winter is our first aquatic story but I think it's the story of out of tragedy and trauma is hope and courage through the eyes of an inspirational animal and it's really almost that simple and I think kids teachers parents relate to it and they can use these stories as a tool to discuss these issues that are not always the easiest yeah. thing to talk about um, you know winter story has really inspired so many children like like Isabella but children with life challenges as well. And many have come to the CMA to meet Winter from all over the country. And we have two very special children with us today. And I want you all to meet 12 and a half year old Brandon Saunders from Florida and 10 and a half year old McKenna McGough, who's sitting right here to my left from Texas. I, I'm really curious about what it is you think that has inspired you most and made the biggest difference in your life after meeting Winter? Well, I used to feel embarrassed about my hearing aid and I didn't like people asking me about it. But when I saw Winter, I, I saw that she wasn't afraid to show off her stump. And this year I got my second hearing aid and instead of hiding it, I showed it off to everyone. And she, she made me feel okay to be different and that we're both special. So she makes you proud of yourself? Yes. That's really lovely. How about you, Brandon? Winter has inspired me to live my life with no limitations and that I have no boundaries. You know, again, that is really great, having no limitations and no boundaries. These are amazing lessons. They really, really are. And i got to tell you guys, you both are such inspirations to all of us, and I want to thank you for being here today and sharing their stories. Aren't these guys amazing? I want to thank the Clearwater Marine Aquarium and Turtle Pond Interactive and Craig Hatkoff and all of our guests. Winter thanks you. We all thank you. She's waving goodbye. Come visit soon. We hope you'll all read Winter's Tale. Bye, everybody. Take care. Have a good day. Thank you.